welcome again to another episode of our Christian Answers program for today. And we're continuing to review the recently aired Cosmos series. And the original Cosmos series, if you might remember, was presented by Carl Sagan in 1980 or around that era. And now we have an update to the original Cosmos series presented by Neil deGrasse Tyson. And it's a newer updated Cosmos series. And we're reviewing that series episode by episode from a Christian perspective. And today we're on number six. We're on the sixth episode of Cosmos. And again, what we see happening in this episode as we see in all of the other episodes as well so far is an attack on the christian faith in the form of trying to debunk the idea that you can have god breaking through into nature into reality and at the same time have natural law and have science and neil degrasse tyson and the writers ha are trying to present the view that if you have a natural law system, if you have science, then you cannot have God at all anywhere involved in the natural process, which is totally untrue. And again, in the episode number six, we see that same theme repeated again. For example, there was a scenario where the ancient Greeks were involved in a theater production many many years ago in the ancient times and the presentation had a cloud with thunder coming over the uh, scene and the people fleeing because they thought that was the voice of god that was the wrath of god he was punishing them for something and the presenter neil degrasse tyson saw that in ancient greece the idea that this was not God's voice, that God was not trying to say something, but that it was a natural explanation, was born. And he applauded that and thought that that was uh, a great triumph in humanity when people began to realize that natural occurrences did not mean God was angry or God was pleased and that it was simply a natural explanation. And so he used that to say that we have grown up from the ancient times. We don't think that God breaks through like this anymore and speaks to people through the clouds and the rain and natural events. Well, as I explained in another episode of the Christian Answers program, those two things are not incompatible. God can and does break through the natural world, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a natural explanation. It simply means that God can do two things at once. He can control nature in an orderly manner, and he can also speak through that nature. And I gave the example a few programs ago about the case on the cross. Christ died on the cross for the sins of the world, and at the same time it says the biblical description describes the clouds came over and it got dark, and there was lightning, and the, the conditions changed. And that was a symbol of what was happening in the spiritual world when Christ died, and he was going through his suffering, and the actual, actual natural world was reflecting that. Now, according to Neil deGrasse Tyson, we should discount the whole spiritual interpretation that the Bible gives us and just simply go with the idea that there were some uh, rain clouds that came over and blocked the sun and the day became cloudy. And so that's his simplistic explanation. And as I tried to explain before, no, that doesn't have to be an either or. It can be a both and. God can use the natural order and he can speak to people as he has done many, many times before. So that was one of the things that the, uh, the uh, sixth episode of Cosmos dealt with trying to debunk the reality of God or the reality of God breaking through into the natural world and it didn't accomplish that because people simply don't buy the either or scenario it can be both and God can do both things now there was another uh, part of that program though that was curious because uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson 
was analyzing the process of photosynthesis and, and they magnified a green stem of a plant and it showed the inner workings of the cells and it showed how sunlight is made into uh, sugar and how the energy from the sun is used in the production of uh, life and he illustrated that with a factory a little miniature sub a, a sub miniature factory at the cellular level and it showed these actual machines producing the sugar and the energy in the plant now my initial impression of that was how do you get these intricate machines working like this who write, writes the code for the molecules to do exactly what they're supposed to do in in the cell without an intelligent designer and this comes back to the whole question where does this information this coded information come in the dna how is it put there and how do you get that from simply chemical blind chance and blind mixing of chemicals you can't do it that way and there is no scientific pathway that shows how you can get the dna sequence from dead matter uh, there has to be some way of coding this material in a way that produces instructions for the raw materials to produce these things and to have a factory going on in a living plant at the cellular level and producing things that prompts the question who designed this and the people like Neil deGrasse Tyson they don't they say well nature did it all uh, nature can do that all but we have to ask the question okay show us how nature can do that all because no one has ever shown how DNA can arise from dead elements just dead matter uh, you have the chemicals there you have all the pieces around but how do you put them in an encoded form it's like a computer a computer can have all of the hardware all set to go but unless there's software unless there's some operator some code operator that has written software to make that hardware go that computer will sit there forever and ever and ever and it will do nothing now what Neil deGrasse Tyson and some of the writers of the Cosmos series want to imply is that you can have a computer and you can have all these hardware items just sitting there ready and the computer itself can write its own code and it will eventually given enough time they say the code will be written by the hardware itself and then once it's written it will improve on itself over and over again throughout the ages that's the whole scenario that cosmos tries to portray well i say that that doesn't make sense i say you need a code writer to write the DNA code to get life started and to produce these um, microscopic factories that were presented in the Cosmos series episode 6 and so it's very curious that they showed the factories in operation at the uh, molecular level but they didn't bring at all in the question of the design and the designer and they didn't at all point to God and they wanted to show that this could all happen naturally but they did not show that so you want to be careful when you're watching cosmos because you won't get the whole picture well stay tuned we'll be back for the second portion of our show in just a minute well welcome to our second uh, segment of our christian answer program today we're reviewing the cosmos series that is on television it was just aired recently on uh, I believe public television and the Cosmos series with Neil deGrasse Tyson is an attempt by a specific type of scientific uh, explanation the naturalistic explanation to basically explain everything and so Neil deGrasse Tyson tries to explain away or debunk any type of God intervention in this earth he wants to try to say that everything can be explained through natural explanation that there is no divine intervention at all 
and that's his position and that's the cosmos position and that is the position of the original cosmos and the original presenter of cosmos carl sagan but that is not the whole picture and we want to review uh the number seven show and this sh episode of cosmos tried to explain how we get to the age of the earth and again like in all of the other episodes of cosmos there was an attempt to debunk any kind of christian answer to this question and it was done in the form of mocking or making fun of early attempts by Christians uh, at trying to date the earth using the Bible's chronology. Now we all know how dangerous that can be because the chronologies in the Bible can be used for different things. They don't have to be uh, sequential chronologies. They can be symbolic chronologies and we there's all kinds of other factors going on so we don't really find a solid way of dating the earth by simply going to the Bible and trying to piece together so-and-so uh, begot so-and-so, so-and-so begot so-and-so, and on and on. That doesn't hold perfectly uh, solid because it all depends on the intent of the author and the, of the book that has the chronologies, and there are different books of the Bible that have uh, chronologies of different personalities in the Bible. Some key on David, King David, the famous King David. Others key on beginning with um, other figures in the Bible. And so when you're going through the chronologies, you have to ask yourself, is this supposed to be uh, a literal uh, father to son, to his son, to his son? in strict order or is this more trying to touch on the most important people in the line and so uh, i would say that going to the bible and trying to discover the age of the earth through the chronologies is a very um, questionable practice and i don't think most christians today would do that to try to figure out the earth's age well neil degrasse tyson wants to jump on the fact that christians in the past have tried to do it that way and then he comes along and takes modern science with the different datings and aging uh, dates of rock formations and all kinds of other means and he wants to try to mock that process that some of the christians used in the early days well that's an attack on christianity and it's not a very fair attack because he could have just as easily gone to early scientific methods to discover the age of the earth and mocked those techniques also because there were people throughout all of history that have asked the question i wonder how old the land is here i wonder how old the earth is and he could have picked on other people but he chose to pick on the christians and their dating methods uh, in the ancient times but the question remains is uh are we getting an accurate picture of the Earth's age even today? And I think that when you go to the scientific literature and when you go to the scientists themselves, uh, they have a number of different means today to um, determine the age of the Earth. And I don't question those different means because I don't believe that the Christian faith in any way hinges upon whether the earth is an old earth or whether the earth is a young earth um, because when you get to go when when you get to be talking about thousands and tens of thousands of years and then going back millions of years and even billions of years these dates actually don't have much meaning as far as the Bible and as far as Christianity goes and as far as uh, dating the earth. Um, as a Christian, we are not locked into a young earth. We are not locked into an old earth. We are not locked into any date of the earth. And so it's not a matter of fighting for the faith to try to defend a young earth. And it's not uh, trying to defend the faith in trying to defend an old earth because the Bible is not here to tell us 
the question of how old the earth is. It's here to tell us about God and his plan for our lives. And it touches on scientific issues, but one of the issues that the Bible does not touch on and give much detail is the age of the earth. It tries to explain and, and talks about the first person, Adam, but again, we don't have a reference point in which we can go back and trace Adam and we don't have a way to exactly measure exactly how old it was that Adam began and we don't actually know how long it was that Adam came about after the other aspects of creation came about. I know some people are saying well if God created the world in six days then Adam would have been made after a certain number of days of creation. Well, we don't know exactly what the six days constituted. We don't know, because back then, we don't know exactly how these were measured. We don't know what the meaning of the day is exactly in the book of Genesis, the early chapters. Because, again, for example, in the, there's a passage that says, uh, one day is like a thousand years to the Lord. Um, it's very much a question of your point of reference. It's very much a question of what you get when you look at the Bible and you try to read it either in a symbolic or literalistic or a combination of both. Sometimes it's supposed to be read very literalistic and then other times it's supposed to be read symbolically and sometimes it's supposed to represent something. So we have to be very humble and not be very dogmatic about some of the things that some Christians in the past have been very dogmatic about. Now, we do know that God has intervened in the world. We do know that God still intervenes through miracles. And these are taught all throughout the Bible. But as far as the actual specific uh, dates of how old the earth is, we can just as easily defer to scientists today and say, if you have evidence that the the earth is 3.5 billion years old or 4 billion years old or whatever the exact figure is that's fine with us it doesn't affect our faith it doesn't contradict our bible and then if there are other christians who want to say no the earth is quite a bit younger and they have evidence for that effect well, then we need to listen to them and see what their arguments are and if they're sound solid arguments then we need to uh, be sympathetic to that. But there isn't anything inherently contradictory about the Christian faith and an old, old earth. And that's the point I, I guess I want to make today. Well, don't go away. We're going to be back to the third segment of Christian Answers for today. God bless. Well, welcome to the third and final segment of our Christian Answers program for today. And we're still talking about the Cosmos series. And today we're talking about the eighth segment of the Cosmos series. It deals with the stars and it deals with how we know about stars and some of the people who helped us understand a little bit about the stars and how we can detect information about stars through scientific means. Now one of the things that we see running through the Cosmos series is a political ideology and we have a example of that in the segment number eight here where it talks about the feminist uh, ideology and it shows it tries to show how uh, women in the early days in the 20, 20th century and even in the mid-century of the 20th century were ignored and their works uh, was discredited and how they had to overcome a lot of uh, male bias against their work and so forth and so on. So we see this sort of axe grinding uh, the feminist ideology, it, it, an attempt to show how unfair things were for women and an attempt to um, show how science was uh, mostly a man's club and how uh, women were not really respected in their scientific endeavors yet how they discovered many great things and were not credited with that and also so forth. And what we've seen political ideology creeping into the Cosmos series before this though 
and we've seen it in the form of the man-made global warming push that we see all throughout the Cosmos series. We've seen this from the very first episode all the way into the one that we're talking about today. Uh, the idea that governments need to call experts together, scientists uh, in particular, and need to listen to the scientists and the consensus of science, and then they need to uh, have a tight control on the population, especially the business community, or else our world is going to destroy itself. And so uh, there's a effort to try to make the argument that it is man that is causing the destruction of the world through uh, carbon coming from gasoline engines and different uh, polluting smokestacks and whatnot and that the only remedy for this is that nations produce higher and tighter regulations on all kinds of uh, carbon emissions and so that would require higher taxation, it would uh, re require higher regulation greater uh, expansion of government powers, greater control by government over individuals and corporations, and so forth. And so there's that global push that we see from the very first episode of Cosmos, even until the one we're talking about today, um, that we need um, to have bigger government, we have to have more regulations, and we have to have experts determine these things because they're the only ones that can really evaluate the uh, science behind it and so forth. And so that ideology was presented uh, all throughout Cosmos, not fairly, I might add, but very biased in favor of the large government and a more socialistic government and world government, actually. And so we see this happening all throughout the Cosmos series. We also see, like I mentioned before, a push of the feminist ideology, which is assuming that uh, women are being oppressed and have been oppressed in the past, and that this has been done in science <clears throat> and is still being done today in the world, and so we need to uh, take uh, drastic steps to change this injustice and we need to then go back into history and see how many great scientific discoveries were actually made by women and not men and we need to give a credit where credit is due and so forth now that is a definitely an attempt to rewrite history but is it correct the the question is um, has there been a gross injustice done in regard to women in science have they discovered, have certain women who were working in science discovered certain things and have not been given credit for it or have been robbed of the credit that they deserve? Have they been denied justice? Have they been oppressed? Have they done this or that or the other? Now, that's the interpretation that the Cosmos series gives. It gives the idea that uh, these uh, men have been oppressing the women in the science field and have not been giving credit to women where credit was due and this was a gross injustice and must stop and all the rest of the feminist ideology that we hear. Well, that has to be looked at and but we should be very cautious of buying into that scenario because that is a typical scenario that we hear on college campuses and from the political liberal side and we need to be aware of that and say wait a minute is that exactly true or is this something that's being pushed to further a cause and I believe that that is the actual case that we're seeing this being pushed as a cause and so we have to be careful with that it's not a strictly scientific topic it's not a, a strictly scientific or it's not even a, a strictly historical thing and it may not even be true so we have to be careful when we watch and listen to the cosmos series that we're not being fed a political ideology under the guise of science because that can happen and it does happen 
because people are human beings and they have beliefs and they have values and they have axes to grind and they have biases and they have things that they want to push and we see that happening today not only in the political world not only in the, in the world of social society at large but we see it in the scientific community we see it also as in a, as the move against christianity we see an attempt to discredit all church leaders uh, discredit the bible discredit the christian faith and all religions generally speaking and so we need to be resistant of that we need to be very cautious of that and bear in mind that we are not hearing and seeing a strictly scientific presentation we're also seeing a political commentary as well an ideological commentary as well so that's just one word of caution when you're watching the cosmos series be aware that it is not just strictly science it's also mixing science and politics and science and ideology and be aware of it and evaluate it for yourself well god bless you hope to see you back here next week on christian answers god bless mm -hmm.